We've talked a little bit about ribonucleotides, but in this video I want to talk about deoxyribonucleotides, and I want to talk specifically about deoxythymidylate synthesis. So how is it that deoxyribonucleotides are made? Well, the only difference between a ribonucleotide and a deoxyribonucleotide is the 2 prime OH group or a 2 prime hydrogen group. Right? So if we want to change a ribonucleotide into a deoxyribonucleotide, we would do that by reducing the 2 prime OH group of a ribonucleoside diphosphate, because the, re the enzyme acts on this specifically, to um, just the hydrogen using NADPH. So NADPH, we've learned before, is involved in reductive biosynthesis, right? So this is a reduction reaction where we're making a deoxyribonucleotide. So which enzyme catalyzes this process? The enzyme that catalyzes this process is ribo nucleotide reductase, which makes sense. We're taking a ribonucleotide and we're reducing it, specifically a ribonucleoside diphosphate. It's also known as RNR. It's also known as ribonucleoside diphosphate reductase. It's just a more specific name because it acts on um, a ribonucleoside diphosphate. So I'll actually include that here. So we have a ribonucleoside diphosphate, right, which could be UDP, CDP, GDP, or ADP. And that'll look like this, right? I'll have a nitrogenous base, a ribose sugar with the OH group with the 2 prime carbon, and then two phosphate groups because it's the diphosphate. And what we want to turn this into is we want to turn it into a deoxynucleoside diphosphate, right? So it would be DUDP or DCDP, DGDP, DADP. And the only difference between this and this is the 2 prime carbon. Here we have an OH group, so it's a ribonucleoside diphosphate. Here we have just the H, so it's a deoxynucleoside diphosphate. So again, this reaction is catalyzed by RNR, right? This ribonucleotide reductase, and it uses NADPH to provide the electrons for that reductive process, right? Here we have oxygens. Here we just have hydrogens. So we're reducing the number of bonds to oxygen, so that's a re that's a reduction reaction. So NADPH is oxidized to NADP+. Okay. Notice that the, none of these here. I didn't note thymine, right? Thymine was not discussed above in this reaction. So how is um, deoxythymidylate made? Well, if you recall, thymine nucleotides exist only in DNA, right? Not RNA. So that's important. Now, how is deoxythymidylate made? Well, if we have DUMP, right? Deoxyuridine monophosphate, um, all we have to do is methylate it. It's methylated to make DTMP. What does that mean? Well, what the heck? What's going on here, right? So, uracil looks like this, right? Thymine looks like this. What is the only difference? The only difference is what's going on here, right? Thymine has a methyl group. So, if we want to make a thymine nucleotide, or, or specifically a deoxynucleotide, uh, all we have to do is take the, ur uh, the uracil and add a methyl group. And that's exactly what happens. We have a deoxyuridine monophosphate, and we add the methyl group to make DTMP. So that's this reaction here. So this reaction, notice again, the only, I'm going to highlight it one more time. Here, this is the only difference between these two. We have a DUMP, deoxyuridine 5' monophosphate, and deoxythymidine 5' monophosphate. So now the only difference is between these two is that this doesn't have a methyl group and this one does. So we're creating here this thymine, or this thymine nucleotide, deoxynucleotide specifically, and the enzyme that catalyzes this step is called thymidylate synthase. So all we need to do is add that carbon, right? Add that methyl group. So what provides it? There's this um, molecule called N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And it is turned into 7,8-dihydrofolate in this reaction. And um, the reason why is because what does this thing do? What is, what is 
this process, what's happening here? Well, this N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate is providing that carbon group, that methyl group. So it provides the methyl group. Okay. Now, this reaction is actually really, really important, especially because it applies to cancer chemotherapy. So if you check out the next video, you can see how this reaction specifically is important when thinking about cancer, or at least a form of cancer chemotherapy. So I hope that was helpful. One last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moveuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thanks for watching.